Hello Gundam fans, uh, this is uh, Perfect Snap Builder here, uh, looking at the M9D Falk from Full Metal Panic. This is the Bandai uh, high grade 160th scale uh, kits from the novel or TV anime Full Metal Panic. Uh, here we have the main body in the center, that is this thing right here. Uh, this is mostly based on the Arbalest and um, it is just just wonderful uh, here you can see that I have done some silver panel lining uh, to kind of bring out the detail on the leg and the arms uh, so before we go get into the kit itself we're gonna look at the, the parts that I, or the armament that it comes with so first of all we have the, the standard assault right Assault Rifle, this looks like a, a standard carbine uh, of the particular brand that everybody is uh, very familiar with. Uh, it's a two piece left and right plus the barrel, that's a separate piece. Uh, this is very detailed and uh, it is quite nice. Handle is completely straight, and that is a little bit odd, but based on the setting of the show, it makes sense because um, every there's a, a allegedly a connection on the palm and the connection in the handle, so there is no trigger, so to speak. Next, we have the newly designed uh, assault carbine that can. This is the ASW two thousand, and this can be divided into several different parts. So here is a carbine mode, and uh, if we remove two parts, which is the top rail here and the front barrel, uh, this is now the personal defense variant of the, the rifle. I'm going to assume that this is the magazine, so this is a, of a bulb-up design. Uh, this is again a very very simple uh, construction, left right for this piece, left right for this piece, and uh, plus the barrel tip and this is just a single piece and we're going to put it back together to the assault carbine variant uh, another side note is that this is a three millimeter peg and uh, this is a three millimeter peg where my hand is pointing at and this is uh, used throughout the, the, the shows Sorry, it's used throughout the model, uh, and uh, later we'll see many other connection points that is of a similar size. Uh, it's also good because it's also compatible with all the Kotobuya kits and um, the new uh, Bandai 30-minute mission kits. And now we move on to the next weapon, which is the larger knife. Uh, this is the IAI Crimson Edge Mono Molecular Cutter. It comes with a sheath and this is this the blade itself uh, you get two of these this is a relatively large blade compared to the size of the kit so you can see that it is um, basically the entire length of the lower leg uh, here we have uh, on the sheath we have the three millimeter peg here and on both sides and uh, this, this encourages uh, better mounting. The sheath is combined of two pieces, left and right. Uh, the blade itself is a single piece um, molded, and you can see that they are there. there's a gaping hole right here that um, the, the encouraged or the, the people who are more keen on fixing things, they can fill this up with uh, putty or whatever they feel like uh, and uh, finish it off with paint. Once again, you get two of these. Next, we have the GRAW2 Mono Molecular Cutter. This is also sheathed, and once again, it comes with a 3mm peg right here to be uh, easily attached to a various hard point of the arm sleeve. And here is the blade itself. It is a asymmetrical design, so uh, there's only blade on the single side. Uh, the back side is completely flat and uh, just just the front edge right here and then we'll sheath it
Next, this is the heat lens. So the heat lens is part of a storyline that is very important. Uh, so I will not dive too deep into how this is used and why it's this particular uh, arm sleeve that came with it. So the special feature of these, this heat lens is that uh, most of the volume and size of this, um, this lens is just to hold the warhead, which is just this thing. And this is the heat round. Uh, this is separatable and uh, it, comes in, it goes in one way so uh, you, you can screw that up. Uh, once again, this comes with two, uh, this comes with a, a nine, sorry, a three millimeter hole and a three millimeter peg for easy insulation. And you get two of these with the kit. Uh, finally, we have a few uh, connection parts. So this is a connection part for fitting the G, uh, the small monolecular cutter onto the back skirt. This is a cover for the back skirt when, it, when this um, holder is not in use. And this is a cover for the three millimeter peg for between the legs. Now, finally, we also have a set of open hands and they have a uh, pretty good detail on the inside too. All right, finally, let's move on to the arm slave itself. So uh, since uh, we talked about the hard point multiple times, uh, I will go through them right now before we get started. So there are two hard points on the back of the mobiles on the arm slave. They're not mobile suits, they're arm slaves. So that's uh, two holes here and one at each side of the leg. So right here and right here. Now let's move on to uh, any other special feature that this thing has. Oh, actually I forgot a uh, hard point. There's another hard, uh, specially uh, designed T-hard point, T-shaped hard point for the holder for the uh, smaller monolecular cutter. Monomolecular cutter. Right, as mentioned earlier, the mobile suit was uh, had a little bit of panel line uh, of silver uh, on the leg parts and a little bit of detail here and here. Um, I haven't done the full panel lining for this arm sleeve yet, so uh, please bear with me while we go through this review. So let's look at articulation of the suit. As you can see that by itself, it can stand no problem. This is kind of the bare minimum, but some of the kits that Bandai has made in the past cannot do that, at least easily. All right, so, so let's start from the head. The head can tilt left, right, and all the way around. And it can be rose, and it can be tilt forward about this far. And there is a gimmick in the head where you can kind of reveal the, the pilot seat, but not, uh, no pilot figure is included. So it's kind of just, uh, if you want your own, you have to make it. Now let's move on to the torso. The torso can expand, uh, the side of the arm, shoulder can expand a little bit. I think it's uh, very, very visible if you, vis if you view it on the top. And that applies to both the right and the left side. Furthermore, this shoulder has a little bit of a Kapal gimmick, like that, and uh, to, to further encourage movements. Naturally, the shoulder can, the arm can rotate 360 degree all around. And uh, this is how far the shoulder, the arm can be raised with all the, the armor still in place. Now, lower, uh, at the lower side of the arm, uh, this can rotate freely, but uh, you will, there is rubbing of all the parts. And that is um, due to the fact that there is this uh, there is this design, uh, angle design, that is kind of just bumpy into anything, everything in this way. Now further down we have the elbow joints. 
The elbow joint is great. Uh, it can even bend uh, back where the human cannot. And uh, of course, it can bend forward uh, and it's a perfect uh, 180 degree bend. It's a perfect 180 degree bend. On the wrist, we have the ball and socket joints that can rotate all the way around. Now let's move on to the uh, to the to the torso. Let me remove the arm so it's easier to see. So this is a torso, and to bend it all the way forward, you you have about this much bend. Bend it all the way back, you have about that much bend. Naturally, it can also bend side to side, like so. That's about the maximum. Uh, of what it can bend there are uh, there are three joints so the first joint is inside the torso behind this part uh, and this uh, this joint uh, just moves for front and back and it does not move side to side the next joint is uh, the joint between the gray part and the blue part so this allows some left right movement and the final joint is the joint between the gray piece and the waist joint so a little bit more movement there All right so that is the the torso next we move on to the legs uh, so the leg can the pelvis joint can uh, drop down and this uh, usually requires a little bit of encouragement but it can drop down so this is the drop down position and this is the raised position. Once again, this is the drop down position. And this is the raised position. Right, with the raised position, we can kick the leg all the way up uh, without any trouble because there's no front skirt. Uh, kicking to the back, there's a little bit of a uh, the back skirt will be in the way, so this is about as far back you can kick. Now with the drop down, the kick upwards is still perfect as it was before. And the pick kick backward is slightly improved uh, due to the fact that uh, the uh, there, there's just a little bit of movement thanks to the drop pelvis. Now let's go look at the knee. So the knee can bend a perfect 180. As you can see right here, it's a bent and there is a uh, part in the middle right here that will move with the bend or rather it's its own um, piece altogether. So uh, it's two points of articulation here and here and it can do a, a, a great bend here. Now let's move on to the lower part of the leg. So this is an interesting bit that I haven't seen on any other kit. So once you drop this uh, back piece here, you can kick the leg back like this and uh, cover it slightly. So there, there is a joint that doesn't really, in, that, that doesn't exist in humans. At least it's not where it is in a human. But well, here it is. Uh, here is a joint that you know can you can exercise uh, when you're posing. And from here, there is also a joint where you can turn side to side. So let's turn to front. So it will turn from side to side. And there is a, also a bend to the front. And this is about how much you can bend to the front. All right, so now let's uh, put this kit together and strap all the weapons to the body.
now we have a arm slave that is positively packing. And it's always glad to see that you have a kit that you can fit all the parts on it other than maybe the swappable hands because you know you only get one set of hands. But yeah, this is a kit that is positively packing once you have all the weapons on it. Alright, so thank you for watching the show. This is once again the M9D Falk from the show Full Metal Panic. So um, yeah, please uh, subscribe and like if you do feel that is worthy. And uh, see you next time.